Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Networking Services and Applications Part 1. Today I'm going to be discussing the basics of the virtual private network, and then I'm going to move on to protocols used by virtual private networks. Now there's a whole lot of stuff to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by talking about the basics of the virtual private network. A virtual private network, or VPN, is used by remote hosts to access a private network through an encrypted tunnel through a public network. Once the VPN connection is made, the remote host is no longer considered remote. It's actually seen by the private network as being a local host. There are many advantages to that, but I'm not going to cover them right now. Even though the network traffic may pass through many different routes or systems, it's seen by both ends as being a direct connection. The use of the VPN can help to reduce networking costs for organizations and business. The cost reduction is partially achieved because the VPN doesn't require the use of a dedicated leased line to create that direct connection. There are several different types of VPNs. There is the site-to-site -site VPN, which allows a remote site's network to connect to the main site's network and be seen as a local network segment. VPN concentrators on both ends of the VPN will manage that connection. Then there's the remote access VPN, which is also called a host-to-site VPN. It allows select remote users to connect to the local network. A VPN concentrator on the local network will manage the connection coming in from the remote users. The remote system making the connection uses special software called VPN client software to make that connection. The third type of VPN is the host-to-host -host VPN, which is often called an SSL VPN. It allows a secure connection between two systems without the use of VPN client software. A VPN concentrator on the local network manages the connection. The host seeking to connect uses a web browser that supports the correct encryption technology, which is either SSL or more likely TLS, to make the connection to the VPN concentrator. It's time to discuss some protocols used by the virtual private network. The big protocol for VPNs is called Internet Protocol Security, IPsec, which isn't actually a protocol in itself, but a whole set of protocols. IPsec works at layer 3 of the OSI model or above. It's the most common suite of protocols used to secure a VPN connection. IPsec can be used with the Authentication Header Protocol, or the AH Protocol. AH only offers authentication services, but no encryption. So it authenticates the user, but there is no encryption of the session. Or, IPsec can be used with Encapsulating Security Payload Protocol, or the ESP Protocol. ESP both authenticates and encrypts the packets. It is the most popular method of securing a VPN connection. Both AH and ESP will operate in one of two modes. The first mode is transparent mode. That is between two devices, as in a host-to-host -host VPN. Or they can be used in tunnel mode, which is between two endpoints, as in a site-to-site -site VPN. IPsec implements Internet Security Association and key management, ISACAMP by default. ISACAMP provides a method for transferring security key and authentication data between systems outside of the security key generating process. It is a much more secure process. Then we have generic routing encapsulation, GRE. GRE is a tunneling protocol that is capable of encapsulating a wide variety of other network layer protocols. It's often used to create a subtunnel within an IPsec connection. Why is that? Well, IPsec will only transmit unicast packets. That's one-to-one -one communication. 
In many cases, there is a need to transmit multicast, which is one to some communication, or broadcast, which is one to many communication, packets across an IPSEC connection. By using GRE, we can get that accomplished. Then there's point to point tunneling protocol, PPTP. This is an older VPN technology that supports dial up VPN connections. On its own, it lacked native security features, so it wasn't very secure. But Microsoft's implementation included additional security by adding GRE to point to point tunneling protocol. Transport layer security is another common VPN protocol. TLS is a cryptographic protocol used to create a secure encrypted connection between two end devices or applications. It uses asymmetrical cryptography to authenticate endpoints and then negotiates a symmetrical security key, which is used to encrypt the session. TLS has largely replaced its cousin, Secure Socket Layer Protocol, and TLS works at layer five and above of the OSI model. Its most common usage is in creating a secure encrypted internet session, or SSL VPN. All modern web browsers support TLS. Now I just mentioned Secure Socket Layer, or SSL. SSL is an older cryptographic protocol that is very similar to TLS. The most common use is in internet transactions. Why? Because all modern web browsers support SSL. But due to issues with earlier versions of the protocol, it has largely been replaced by TLS. SSL version 3.3 has been developed to address the weaknesses of earlier versions, but it may never again catch up to its cousin, the TLS protocol. Now that concludes this session on Networking Services and Applications Part 1. I talked about the basics of the virtual private network and then I talked about the protocols used by the VPN network. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I look forward to doing another soon.